And I literally nearly cried that day. I literally said, and I'll never forget it, I went, F off, I'm not doing it. It's funny being here in Mexico. It's crazy that we thought we'd be here one day like a few years ago, but we're here now. It's pretty cool sitting in this arena. Um, yeah. Was this what you were envisaging when that back in the start of DDP? To be quite honest, no. I'll be straight up, right? Um, it's always been the goal of Dennis's, and we just helped him. The difference between us, I think, is, well, I know, is, you know, we're, we're not natural born promoters, but we're natural born friends. So we're helping a friend rather than being promoters with Dennis here. So this is really personal for us, helping on his journey. He's always had it in his head from the day we met him when he knocked on our door. Um, I'm going to be a world champion one day. We're like, yeah, okay. But we followed him on this journey and we're here today. So how did DDP come about? I mean, you weren't originally Dennis's promoter. No, I was... Um... Well, me and Danny were both sponsors, and I was Dennis's um, unofficial manager. So I do all his social media and his mainstream media, and, and try and get new sponsors on board, and sell tables and tickets to his fights and stuff. And then he had some uh, some issues with his his uh, his other promoter who he had, or his his promoter who he had, and he was inactive. And then him and Danny turned up. I think it was planned. I think I was played. As him and Danny turned up to my office one day and said, "Let's just do a show." And I literally nearly cried that day. I literally said, and I'll never forget it, I went, fuck off, I'm not doing it. And but the your next I, question was, when are you thinking? And Dennis <laughs> goes, we can do it in six weeks. And I said, what are you talking about, mate? We can do it in six weeks. Yeah, be fine, mate. We'll just sell some tickets and hire a venue and put a ring in there. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's boxing, is it? And uh, it's just evolved from there. And, and now we've obviously got other boxers signed to the DDP brand. Um, Rowan Murdoch, who's number five in the world, who's probably going to, you know, Rowan's probably two fights away from, from these kind of arenas, which is fantastic. Uh, Willie Nassio, who we just signed, who's our new heavyweight. Didi Hops, who will be a future world champion, female world champion. You know, to answer your question there about did we ever envision this, probably not to this scale. You know, you always, in your back of your mind, you go, yeah, we'd love to get DDP to a world title. But in truth, you know, we can pretend that we're something that we're not. But in truth, it was one show. Let's get him in the shop window. Hopefully a real promoter will come along and uh, someone who knows what they're doing and sign him up and we can just go back to going to his fights and getting pissed again instead of going to his shows and having nervous breakdowns. So that was probably the biggest learning curve. And then after the first show, people could ring in us and messaging us and going, you guys are a breath of fresh air. You know, can you do another show? And we're like, oh fuck, do we do it? Do we go again? Because it is, it's, it's, it's a full-time job and you're trying to, do a full-time gig as your second job because this isn't either of ours or Dennis's first job as you know it's mm -hmm. this is part-time for us and, and it's you're fitting in a, a part-time role into 60 hours a week plus no backing it's all self backing we've backed ourselves and Dennis throughout this whole journey you know from the first show that we said we'll do one and one and only show to I don't know five shows later to where we are today so this is all self back with <clears throat> no no support no government support or anything this is all on us. We try to attract the boxers that are similar to us as people, that don't have a lot of backing financially, didn't get a lot of support in their career, but they're good people. You know, we we don't want to work with dickheads. At the end of the day, you know, you got to spend your working life working with people you want to enjoy. So that's why we took on someone like a Will, because you look at Dennis and you look at maybe a Will Nassio and go, why would you sign Will Nassio? You know, he's lost three, four times, and it's like but Will wants to achieve something great. So if we can help in any way and we can work together on that and help him achieve that, well, that's reward in itself, you know? Yeah, what we wanted to try and do with, with, with DDP was maybe take a bit of the politics out of boxing, you know? One thing that struck me when I got involved with Dennis and, and both myself and Danny years ago was how little money they make, you know, and for the effort, they're full-time athletes. And most of them that we know, they train, I'll give you Didi Hobbs, right? So Didi Hobbs, she trains before work, she goes to work, does a full day. When most people are going home in the evening, she goes back to the gym. She does that six days a week, just because she wants to be a world champion. So to me, why wouldn't you want to help someone like that? At the end of the day, boxing's boxing, and, and I think everybody's in this you know, to, for the glory and, and, and for the money, but we could be really happy to walk away from boxing today 
literally after this fight and go, do you know what, we're done. And I feel we've made a really positive contribution to boxing in Australia by, you know, maybe upping the standards in terms of professionalism of some of the shows, um, maybe the way that the boxers are, are marketed on social media, perfect example with yourself, Giroux. You know, the standard has gone up and that's not, I'm not saying that's because of DDP and that's, I'm not being arrogant. But definitely, I think, I think it is. Well, I definitely, think, people have stepped up their marketing and their way they portray a fighter. They're making him into superstars, and that's what the boxers are at the end of the day. They're the superstars. Don't mind the promoter, the managers, the matchmakers. It's the boxer. So if people don't know them or don't care about them. They're not going to buy into them. So what we want to do is give them a clear pathway, let them focus on training, and we deal with the bullshit. Absolutely, we've disrupted boxing. I really believe that. Uh, we've definitely made an impact in Queensland, but also around Australia as well. Um, and it wasn't an int intention to disrupt boxing. It was, again, all about the fighter. Fighter focus first, and then work everything around them. Where, from our experience, it was the other way around. And we saw the boxers as being, even the conditions of their change rooms and the venues they were in. It's, it, it just, you know, they weren't treated like professionals um, and weren't given the right respect. Now that's not to disrespect any other promoter, that's just the way it's been done. Um, and we saw that and we changed that. And um, I don't know, we've had like 50 boxers ask mm. to join us mm. you know, and we, we can't handle that. <laughs> so we have handpicked a few that um, that we believe to give them that straight journey. And you know, what we, what we really want to do is um, that nobody, to put them into the top 15 at least and give them that journey to there. The smaller shows and we've got the bigger shows. You know, from the top 15, then we can bring them here. We can bring them to the US, we can bring them to Europe. Uh, we can we can take, you know, go to the bigger fights. But, and I think there's a missing link in Australia between a nobody and getting into the top 15. And that's the journey we're talking about, where the unknown, um, make sure they're getting paid correctly and on time um, and paid for what they're worth. Mm. Getting our names out there and hopefully with the better shows, ideally, you know, if we've got a bit of a vision, is that we do get some real big sponsors like TV or government based that there can be a show on in nearly every single week in Australia, not just from us, but all promoters um, and, you know, put boxing back on the map. That's where boxing is struggling at the moment, you know, they're... The difference is they've got TV dates, but the problem is they're making these, and there's nothing wrong with it, I, I get why the promoters are doing it, but they're making these TV dates pay-per-view. So if you're a regular punter, you've got to pay 50 or 60 bucks to watch a, a boxing event and you won't know half the card. Why don't we put those shows on Fox Sports every week, build some stories, give them for free, and turn these fighters into pay-per-view fighters, rather than asking the public to give you $50 for a guy you've never heard of, and you know, we would love to sit down with a, with a TV company and go, we're ready and ready committed to, to drive Australian boxing for the next 10 years. But and there's no shortage of willing boxers who are no. desperate it's for the opportunity. That's all we need. The return on investment would be massive for the TV. Um, you know, it's just by having a little bit of belief um, in that. Because there is a big part of Australia that loves boxing. Mm -hmm. Any big event, and we've proven that how many times, some Corp Stadium, Adelaide Oval, you know, they've been sellouts. So there's obviously an interest in boxing. It's just, I suppose, you know, getting, just gelling that together where I suppose we need a bit of help with that.